Okay, last day of notes. We have more equilibrium calculations. There's nothing new with this. It's just more practice. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our rice table. And I'm going to be efficient. I was going to say lazy, but I'll be efficient and use my reaction that I have written right there. So we have reaction, initial concentration, change in concentration, and equilibrium concentration. So I can go ahead and get this set up. Maybe you want to put a couple lines in there. And we read through it. It says, what are the concentrations at equilibrium of all chemicals if 0.5 molar PCL5, so 0.5 molar PCL5, is placed into a container and is allowed to come to equilibrium? So I know that information, and I know my K value, and that's it. So both of those. So from this, I can easily come up with my other initial concentrations. Nothing. I've got zero of my chlorine and my PCL3. So I also very easily know that that must mean that I add to this side and subtract to the, from this side. So it's got to be working more in the reverse reaction, reverse direction. Um, that's all the information I have, so now I'm going to be going. I'm going to go ahead and use X's. So part of this, this is really just more practice again. It's just making sure you know the steps to take. So hopefully you can look at this and say that you just have to use X values for this. And remember, on this step with your change, you're looking at your coefficients. So you're going to have to subtract X from your products, and you're going to have to add one X to each of your reactants. So when you add it up to get to your equilibrium concentration. You get x's for both of these, and you get 0 0.5 minus x for your product. We know that our equilibrium constant expression, I'll just write that real quickly, is going to be our products over our reactants. And they're all a coefficient of 1. So once you've got that, then you can go ahead and plug in the values that you have at equilibrium. That's what you're plugging in. So it becomes 0 0.041, that's what's given to us, and then 0 0.5 minus x is on top, and then x squared is on the bottom. So we just do the math. This is really hard to read now. Okay, the zero, that's a zero. Okay, sorry about that. And all of this equals zero. So then you end up just getting x equals 0 0.49. So that means that when you go ahead and plug that back into your, um, the values that you have at equilibrium, you plug in your x, you get for your PCL3 concentration and for your Cl2 concentration, they will be the same which is going to be 0 0.490 molar. And then your PCL5 concentration. There we go. Is going to be equal to um, 0.5 minus 0.49. So that's going to equal 0 0.01 molar. There's another 0 in there. OK, so that's the first one. And then the second one. Um, here we're given, again, we're given our reaction. And we are told that our initial concentrations are all given to us for all three compounds. So we've got 0 0.1 molar, 0 0.1 molar, and 0 0.8 molar. So I want you to think about this and think about what your next step would be. You'd look at this and go, wow, I have no idea which direction this reaction is going to proceed. So in order to figure that out, I know you're thinking it, you must calculate Q to try and figure that out. So in this case, we would just say our point, um, point 0.8, and there's a coefficient of a 2, so we're going to square that over 0.1 times 0.1, so I'm just going to say squared. And what this ends up equaling is 
64 when you do all of that math. But if you look up here, k equals 2, and we got 64. So 64 is too big. And you should easily remember that you've got products in the numerator, reactants in the denominator. So if it's too big, that means you've got too many products. So you need to shift to create more reactants. So it needs to shift in this direction. So you're going to add reactants and subtract from your products because your products, you've got too much since it's such a big number. So that's why we went through that process was so was that we could determine uh, which direction it would proceed. So now we can go ahead and look at our variables. We're just going to call this x, x, and 2x. So when we add this up, we get 0 0.1 plus x, 0 0.1 plus x, and 0 0.8 minus 2x. And then we just do the math. We're told to remember what our k value is right here. So we can just plug that in and say that 2 equals 0.8 minus 2x, and that's going to be squared, divided by 0.1 plus x. I should put zeros in there. Plus x, and again, that's going to be squared. So the easiest way to go about this, when I see all that squaring, is I would just go ahead and then take the square root of everything. So from there, you end up getting 1.414 equals, I'm just going to shortcut it here. And nothing like watching somebody do algebra. So what you should ultimately come up with is x equals 0 0.193. So make sure you could do that math. And that means that our hydrogen and our iodine concentrations are equal to 0 0.1 plus uh, 0 0.193. So that's going to be equal to 0 0.293 molar. And our hydroiodic acid concentration is going to be equal to 0.8 minus 2 times 0.193, which gives us 0 0.414 molar. And you are done with equilibrium calculations.